Good morning. Oh, hi, Dana Goldberg. I saw you tweeted. What did that mean to you as as a gay American? His when he said LGBT, right? And I stand with you trans people i it just i i was just tearing up so many times last night yeah it's just so nice to have that start to become a normal thing from our president and mm-hmm. to say the trans youth i have your back it is it's 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 immeasurable that sort of thing coming from one of the highest powers you know the highest, the highest office in the in the land um it's interesting and, and I don't know if there's anything that can be done with these states' laws, you know, at, at some point with an executive order that they're trying to, you know, take back, you know, t- take away the rights for health care, take away the rights for sports, take away the rights for all those things. It'll be interesting to see what steps are also taken other than just lip service. But usually when Joe says something, he backs it up. So I think yeah. this is the beginning of something big. Can I ask a personal favor, people? Stop posting picture of the little black girl going into the segregated school next to a picture of Kamala Harris. Just when I stopped crying, they had her walking into the school and then right next to Kamala Harris walking into the State of the Union. It's just what that visual moment meant to little girls everywhere, right? Absolutely. And to have the two women behind Joe Biden, you know, uh, during the speech, and I'll I'll be happy when it's three. (laughs) I'll be happy when there's a woman up front and two in the back. Yeah, should have been Hillary. That's not important now. Okay, (laughs) all right, let's move on. Let's move on from that. Absolutely. Yep, no, no, no. Um, Yeah, Jane, I've been talking about this letter just because as it relates to COVID and those of us that lived through the AIDS crisis, I lost my uh, first love of my life to AIDS. And so Jason in El Cajon, California said, um, Steph, a neighbor of mine told me all the reasons she doesn't want to get the vaccine, not 100%, altered DNA. Okay, nonsense, nonsense, blah. I wanted to blurt out 40 years. That's how long my gay friends and I have waited for an AIDS vaccine. I happily drove 75 miles to a different county to get my COVID vaccine. I didn't care which one I got. Three weeks later, I did it again for my second dose. I hear all the excuses not to get the vaccine when we should be grateful to get it within a year of the pandemic starting. I lost everyone I knew in the 80s and 90s to AIDS, all my friends and two boyfriends. And you don't want to get the COVID vaccine because you have some doubts or you read something on Facebook, whatever. I walk around my neighborhood and see all the Blue Lives Matter flags and Trump flags now appropriately faded and tattered. One Trump house around the corner is where a medical helicopter nurse and her husband live. They just got COVID. Greed, ignorance, and misinformation is going to kill us all. Um, I hadn't heard anyone else put it in the specter of the of the AIDS crisis. But, yeah. you know, I was saying that Dr. True. Dr. Fauci, in the midst of working on the AIDS crisis, was asked, what's your worst nightmare? And he described COVID, basically. He said yeah, a, a I disease mean, that is spread like this... right through the air, it, highly mm-hmm. infectious and asymptomatically. And that's the thing is that people are like, oh, it's, you know, this is an emergency use vaccine. This is too soon. It's, it's just came out. This didn't just come out. They've been working on this for years. Yeah. They finally technology. got the funding they needed. They've been waiting for one of these to go deadly. And the, the cold is a coronavirus, the, the, the common cold. And now it has shifted into this. This is what they have been waiting for. This is what they do for a living. This isn't a new idea. It just happens to be an emergency funded idea. Right. right. Get the vaccine. Right. Um, here's another, Michael and Paso Robles. Uh, Steph, this is my dad's running mate. Um, something about Goldwater that shows that he might be better than modern Republicans was that in the 64 campaign, I remember this, one of Johnson's closest advisors was caught in a compromising position with another man. And Goldwater showed no interest in trying to make a campaign issue out of it, nor did he ever show any interest in any anti-gay demagoguery, a far cry from uh, modern conservatives, especially the religious ones who seem to think uh, Jesus spoke of little else, uh, um, of which he said actually nothing about homosexuality. But um yeah, That's because the I, religious right didn't take its roots until Reagan. It was a yeah. story about my dad, uh, I, Dana, when he was chairman of the RNC, that there was a guy that was, can you can't even imagine this today. He was arrested for a DUI. It was a seat my dad really needed to win, and it was a Democrat that was arrested for DUI. My dad said, no, he's a good man. I know him. I knew his wife. I know his kids. We're not going to use that. That's a DUI. Can you imagine? <laughs> right? So it, it's just... Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the, including Tim Scott, who basically said I got pulled over seven times in a year and I've been called the N word. But there's no racism in the Republican part. I mean, 
I just, it, you know, I just don't understand it, it to use someone as a mouthpiece like this and for him to go along with it. I just, mm -hmm. listen, I don't understand the blindness in that. It'd be me like saying that there's no homophobia in this country anymore because we have marriage equality. It's just not true. Yeah. 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 Here, here he is saying America's not uh, racist. Okay. Hear me clearly. America is not a racist country. Mm -hmm. It's backwards mm -hmm. to fight discrimination with different types of discrimination. And it's wrong to try to use our painful past to dishonestly shut down debates in the present. So, and then he said he went from cotton to Congress and his family. So Dana, correct me if I'm wrong, that would imply that he's, uh, his ancestors were owned by white people who they picked cotton for, but with, this is not a racist country in any way. We, we don't have any history of racism or. And you know what? Fine. If you want to split hairs, let's do this. The country, the land of America is not racist. The people sure as hell are. <laughs> so let's yeah. just go land. there. <laughs> not all of them, yes. but there's a lot. There's 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 some real loud ones, right. and there's many. And then he just flat out lied about the uh, voting bill in Georgia. Republicans support making it easier to vote <laughs> and harder to cheat, and so do the Jesus. voters. Big majorities of Americans support early voting, and big majorities support voter ID, including African Americans and Hispanics. Okay, first of all, every single thing in the Georgia law makes it harder to vote, right? Cutting hours, right. cutting drop boxes, doing know this, know that, no water in the line. No, I mean, it's, it's there was a Georgia yeah. politician that said he was going to charge black people with fake felonies to take away their voting rights. If that right. is not a, a racist comment, I mean, then, then nothing is right. The best he can manage is the president seems like a good man. Well, that probably is because he is a good man. Like that was too yeah. far to say he's a good man, but we disagree. I mean, yeah. even Lindsey Graham can say he's a good man. So right. he's a good man. Oh, Lindsey was nearly in tears. If you've seen that monologue <laughs> about what a good man Joe Biden is. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. From the back of a car. I don't right. understand how that interview took place, but whatever. If we have it on for Whatever that was. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so let's. Oh, and then uh, one last one. Biden, the minimum wage, man. Last night. Yep. So I stand here tonight before you in a new and vital hour of life and democracy of our nation. And I can say with absolute confidence, I have never been more confident or optimistic about America. Not because I'm president, because of what's happening with the American people. We've stared into the abyss of insurrection and autocracy, pandemic and pain. And we, the people, did I, not I, flinch. All right, we've done that one before. I was talking about three, minimum wage, uh, cut three. President and by the way, while you're thinking about sending things to my desk, <laughs> let's raise the minimum wage to $15. <laughs> Kermit Blail. No one, no one working 40 hours a week, no one working 40 hours a week should live below the poverty line. We need to ensure greater equity and opportunity for women. And while we're doing this, let's get the Paycheck Fairness Act to my desk as well. Equal pay. It's been much too long. So um, the headline, raise taxes on the rich, spend it on education. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Computer says yes. Yes, that sounds good. Um, Absolutely. I mean, all this clutch the pearls. His plan would return the tax rate on wealthiest Americans to 39.6%. Oh, horrors. <gasps> Is, what, 70% under Eisenhower? Okay, after it fell to 37% under the GOP's oh, 2017 law, it would also tax capital gains as income for people making more than a million dollars a year, right? It's the how wealthiest 0.3% of households and it just closed loopholes, right, for hedge fund managers, etc. cetera. Um, I, it is shocking, Sean. Thank you for <laughs> accentuating that. <laughs> I, the punctuation. I, yeah. I mean, obviously, every, you know, Dana, we saw the first poll, 85 percent approval rating for the speech last night. Fifteen percent. Absolutely. Didn't, yeah. Absolutely. And then you've got vampires like Stephen Miller saying he didn't reach out and he didn't, you know, cross the aisle. Who do you think is also going to benefit from the child tax credit? Who do you think is also going to benefit from fifteen dollars an hour? Republicans right. on mass numbers. Right. And that's what the, he needs to keep moving forward. I'm telling you, if we can do policy that benefit Republicans and they can start realizing that the Democrats are the ones passing it, they would at least start voting against their own politicians. I'm hoping I'm hoping that's yeah. what happens. Well, so one of the things they're screaming about too, Biden's American Families Plan would open food benefits to people that had been convicted of uh, felonies. But, I, you know, first of all, once again, it benefits everybody. 
to help people get back into right after they've paid their debt to society. Obviously, mm-hmm. people should be able to vote. They should be able to get assistance to get back on their feet. It's in our interest for people to get back on their feet. Well, after- it's also not in our just in our interest. Stuff. I mean, we have a, a racist um, system right. that is, you know, putting black and brown people disproportionately behind bars and making them felons. Right. So that yeah, let's fix that. And yeah, we need to get they should have their voting rights back. A lot of their sentences just should be expunged. Yeah. Is that the right word? Expunged? Yeah. That sounds yeah. funny when I said it. You yeah. know who yeah, used to be very tough on crime is uh, Rudy Giuliani. And let's oh. talk about that, Daniel. Let's talk about what a good day Let's yesterday. <laughs> I know. Was there, I, I mean, did any of your apartments get raided? I, mine wasn't. Not mine. I I know. My favorite apartments. was the gif of, uh, you know, that we always post of Rudy or of uh, Hillary Clinton with a glass of wine going. Mm-hmm. Just me enjoying a glass of wine in my non-FBA rate, right, rated home. Did you see <laughs> Did you see the Four Seasons uh, landscaping company yes. tweeted? Yes. And they were yes. like, wrong apartment. We kicked him out a long time ago. Yep. And and his his neighbor his neighbor was the oh best. my god I just came outside and all oh. you people were all here and I just thought I would make a statement. What is oh, her fifteen minutes of fame! I love that. Or fifteen seconds. Oh my god! I, it was Senate, fantastic. The Senate committee we may have missed this and all the hubbub. Uh, advanced Biden's nominees for the U.S. Postal Service, uh, setting up a final confirmation vote, which you means we're this close to. You're fired, Louis DeJoy. It was a. Fantastic. Last oh day yesterday, uh, so they need to be confirmed by the full Senate. Hopefully, that will. Uh, uh, he has got to go. I'm telling you, karma's coming for all yeah. these mother. Don't you think? Doesn't it feel like that? Oh yeah, that'll be my moment of joy when that guy's in prison. In what? Into jail? No. What? DeJoy's <laughs> going to jail? Oh. <laughs> Do not pass to go. Go directly to the jail. <laughs> we got oh. a, We got a million of them. Okay. Yeah.